Let's talk about Towers 1 and 2. What, what is the most compelling evidence you see there that all is not as the official story tells us? With the Twin Towers, yes. Well, it's, it's so much. The, the most obvious would be the fact that these two buildings, which were steel-framed high-rise buildings, and uh, when we're talking about steel frame, the point is that there were 287 steel columns that went from the sub-basements through the roof. And in the lower floors, these were absolutely massive. They taper off, of course, as you the top. The ones in the, I'm talking here about the core columns, there were 47 core columns and then 240 columns around the outside. For the building to come down as they did, straight down, all 287 steel columns had to fail simultaneously. Think about that. And the theory is that it was fire that caused the steel, beam, the steel columns to weaken, and that's what brought the building down. Well, first of all, steel frame high-rise buildings have never come down because of fire. Secondly, but the argument that you've heard over and over is that two buildings like that have never been hit by jet liners going 600 miles an hour either. Oh, sure. But also, uh, it's amply documented that these buildings were built, these were very tall buildings. They knew they might get hit by planes. So they did the calculations, took the biggest plane of the time, the 707, and say, let's say this could hit the building. Uh, the determination was you would have fires, you would have some loss of life, the buildings would stand. It would be a relatively minor incident. So they were ready for that. They, they, first, and furthermore, the buildings were standing for, in one case, uh, 110 minutes, in another case, about uh, not quite an hour, and uh, they were perfectly still. So whatever the, whatever the planes had done, the impact of the planes had done, that was long gone. You had fires in the building, and you had random, you know, here and there fires, not clear through the building. And uh, they were actually starting to burn out by the time. They were not massive, you know, these were not towering infernals for very long. And uh, so let's say that e you could imagine that for some reason the fire was causing the steel to weaken. Well, it would have started gradually to, the, the steel would have started to sag. You look at the video, you don't have sagging. You have absolutely steel buildings which all of a sudden just start coming down. Well, in the case of the South Tower, you do have that section above the point of impact, which moves forward, which starts oh. to deter disintegrate and then goes straight. Yeah, I'm talking about after the initial explosions. Now, that's another thing. Both buildings explode at the top. And uh, how do you see that? How do you evaluate that? Well, as a, this is more evidence that the explosives were placed because, uh, for many reasons, but the most dramatic is that you had steel, co uh, steel uh, columns, and sometimes sections of steel columns, three or four columns, still held together, being blown out horizontally five to six hundred feet and sometimes plastered on neighboring buildings. So we've got video. You can you can see this. There's no doubt about it. Um, the theory is that the only three sources of energy were the impacts of the airplanes. That's long gone. The fires, and gravity. Gravity pulls things straight down. What's the source of energy to blow sections of steel? Wearing, wearing, weighing many, many, many thousands of pounds out five to six hundred feet horizontally. 
So that's what, with the towers, you have that. And then you've got a very strange thing with the south tower, that that top section starts to fall off sideways. And by the law of the conservation of energy and <laughs> momentum and various physical laws, it should have kept going. Suddenly, it freezes in place, it explodes, and just goes straight down. So that's, that's impossible in itself, according to official theory. But then, once that occurs, then the whole building comes down, and at virtually free fall acceleration, which means that the lower floors, with all of their steel and concrete, remember, there are no fires down there, There's no, the fires are up there, and you've got these enormous steel columns, and the top part of the building comes right through the lower part of the building as if it weren't there. None of that concrete or steel seems to offer any resistance whatsoever, virtually no resistance, or you wouldn't have it coming down at virtually the acceleration of free fall. Now, if you talk to uh, architects and engineers who, who believe the official story, they say that you've got these floors that are an acre in size, virtually, and that all of that air being expelled as the top floor reaches the next floor expels the steel and all that dust and everything else out the side with the forces that you see. How do you respond to that? Do you know anybody who would go on the public record making such a ridiculous comment, put their name to it? I've not seen anybody. I can, t I can believe they're going to tell you that in private. I don't know of any professional engineer who's not a government employee or who's not working for a company who depends on government contracts who would say such a thing. We, uh, we, we and, I, and I make that point, by the way, because uh, I don't know, in my, my, my new book, Upton Sinclair makes this famous statement that it's very difficult to get a man to understand something when his salary depends upon his not understanding it. So, I know there are many architects and engineers who will tell you they believe the official story because their salaries depend on it. 